Okay, we've got our 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ with the check engine light and a couple fault codes. So we've got a couple O2 sensor fault codes and it's running like crap, nice and rich and sloppy. And we also got a hydraulic fan solenoid code. All right, check engine light. And we got our codes. Hydro fan code and our O2 sensor code. Let us clear the faults. Clear faults on ECU. Yeah, clear. <sighs> Give it a couple seconds. Clearing, clearing, clearing. It's gonna be a good day. Get rid of all these codes once and for all. Have a code free WJ. That'd be sweet. All right, 80%, that's good enough. Let's start her up. Yeah, baby. No codes, no codes, no codes. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, there you go. That's how you clear the codes on a <sighs> Oh, man. Oh, Jeep, my life. They're back. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we are here again with our 2002 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ, the Green Hornet, 4.7, and it's got some check engine light issues. As you can see from the intro, I've been battling some codes. I got this $14.99 code. It is the hydraulic fan solenoid code, and that trips on immediately after I clear it. As soon as I start the ignition, five seconds later, boom, code. So... That's driving me crazy. I also got a ton of oxygen sensor codes that keep popping up after I clear it. So I got two things going on that are a pain in the butt and today we're gonna solve it and I'm getting close. I think we're gonna tackle this today. So let me let me bring you up to speed. I'll catch you guys up on some stuff I've been rolling around with. Uh, the process of elimination, which brings me here today. So I think we're gonna cover some ground and I'll take you through it. So here we go. All right, here is our 2002 WJ. It was in pretty poor condition when I got it. The radiator had a big chunk taken out of it. Didn't hold any fluid. Also, there was power steering fluid leaking everywhere. So I changed the pump, changed the reservoir, changed all the lines. And since the hydro fan said DNR in big red letters, I figured, hey, might as well change the hydro fan too while I was at it. So I got, actually, I got an electric fan but I figured I didn't want to put that in yet. I wanted to get this thing running properly. So I got another hydro fan. The second hydro fan I got had the wrong solenoid. See, the hydraulic fan solenoid was changed in the last year they made them for the Grand Cherokee. And I did not know this when I bought my hydraulic fan replacement. See, this is the solenoid from a 2004. It's different. It does not have this Torx screw on it. And unfortunately, this one doesn't work with what I'm using. Yep, I had no idea there was two different solenoids, so of course I had no idea they wouldn't be compatible. And apparently when you put a 2004 solenoid into a 2001 to 2003 WJ, it won't kick on until it's at 230 degrees or so. There's different wiring, different electronics. I don't know how it works, I'm just telling you guys. So <laughs> you can't do that, you can't swap them out. So. That's why I thought I still had the check engine light because I put the wrong year solenoid in it. So I went and got another fan. This is the fan that I have in now. I put all of that in, then I went to the dealership. I got power steering fluid. They gave me the wrong power steering fluid. I had to call my buddy Doug. What do you mean it's the wrong fluid? Yeah, the hydro fan in the WJ needs Mopar power steering fluid, part number MS10. 838. We figured that out. We had that video. It was very awesome. Jeep my life. Thanks, Doug. But I'm still throwing codes now. Even though I have the right fan, the right solenoid, the right juices, still got that 1499 code, and that's really bothering me. So, uh, let me show you one other thing that might be causing that. Could be the wiring. If it's not the fan, it's not the solenoid, it's probably the wiring. So, let's dig into the wiring. All right, this is really hard to show you when the Jeep is together, but right here, this is the wire harness that comes out of the hydraulic fan solenoid, and you can see here that it doesn't have that ribbed sheath 
on the wire. So that kind of threw up a red flag to me. If you chase this wire all the way down, you can see there's no covering. So this leads me to believe that the previous owner had this code and he thought it was the wiring too. So when you get down all the way through this harness, it comes to a, a little junction and a splice and then again it leads it up to there where you could kind of see a little white zip tie. Now, I believe that the previous owner chased a broken wire or tried to chase or find a broken wire up to that little zip die right in the center of the frame and he couldn't find it and then gave up on it. So because the previous owner attempted to trace a break in the wires up into the battery tray and was unsuccessful, that was kind of discouraging to me. I really don't feel like taking off the battery in the battery tray to find a break from that point to probably the PCM. So I'm gonna do that later. Right now, I'm gonna jump into that O2 sensor code. All right, so we're checking the fuse box now because if you're blowing fuses, that could cause check engine light. So, oh yeah, here look, we got a radiator, 40 amp fuse right here. Let's go check that. Oh, of course, <laughs> we don't have an electric fan. We have a hydro fan, so we don't have a fuse for that. So again, that search continues for the $14.99, but we're gonna come over here and we're gonna look in this spot right here. This is position 16, yep, 16. We're supposed to have a fuse right here, 15 amp. Now this is the O2 sensor fuse, so let's pull this out. Yep, we got a blown fuse. So I put in another fuse, hoping that, you know, that could fix the issue immediately. No more O2 sensor codes. And boom, that blew too. So now I know there is a short somewhere in the O2 sensors. So we're gonna jump down and we're gonna take a look. All right, because I'm blowing fuses, I'm gonna take off this negative battery terminal because I don't want to short anything else out. <laughs> I'm playing it safe today, boy. Darn right. I don't want to make anything worse. Blowing fuses, breaking stuff. <laughs> All right, battery terminal disconnected. Ooh, dielectric grease. All right, let's go look at our wires. Hey, you know what, guys? I just thought of something. Because I have shocks blown straight through their strut towers, how cool would that be if this shock over here came and shredded both an O2 sensor wire and a fan wire and cause them to short out together. That could be uh, two birds with one stone, you know? Um, eh, unfortunately, this isn't touching up against anything. Oh, well, that would have been cool. <laughs> Solve them both at once. Ah, uh, no such luck. All right, on the ground to check the O2 sensor wires. All right. Got it nice and jacked up. Now we can come underneath and take a look. And here we are, guys. We are on the passenger side at the downstream O2 sensors, and it didn't take long to find some disturbing evidence. Look at this. Look at this heat shield. This wire is laying right on the exhaust pipe, and this is just chewed up. But doesn't mean there's not any internal breaks, but I don't think that would cause a short. That just would cause a, a bad O2 sensor. So, uh, we'll have to revisit this, of course, but I'm going to keep searching, uh, keep on moving down the line. And for now, let's see if I can just tuck this whole thing in this heat shield. That would be great. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's easy. Out of the way. Um, this one is out of the way. So both my O2 sensors downstream seem to be all right, at least... Not bad enough to cause a short. Uh, I see an upstream O2 sensor up over there. Let's take a closer look. Time out. Does anybody know what this is supposed to be? It's just nothing but a pile of crappy rust now. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jeep my life. Okay, we're here on our passenger side upstream O2 sensor. And this harness looks pretty good. It actually looks like it was just replaced. Maybe to try to solve that O2 sensor check engine light. It's even got some fresh zip ties up here. So this is good. This is zip tied out of the way. I don't think this one is the problem. So we'll move on to the next upstream O2 sensor, which should be over here and should be the last. Ugh. There it is. Ugh, that's not looking good at all. Oh my goodness. 
This is just covered in a pile of power steering fluid. This is so nasty, guys. Ugh. Right, right out of the sensor, it droops down, and it was in a puddle of power steering fluid on this diff. Ugh, nasty. Well, the short could be right there in the connector, so we'll have to address that. Let's see if these wires are shot. Look at the sheath that's just completely ripped apart. I guess all the rubbing on that diff ripped the sheath. Oh, what is this? I can't really see it, but there are breaks in the wires. Hey, 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 this could be it, guys. I think we got it. All right, I got them apart. It took, took a little while. I got no strength in here with just my fingers, and these things were just seized together with goop and sludge. But, took them apart, they were all nasty, so I sprayed them out with that contact cleaner, the good stuff, and I wiped down these wires, and clearly you can see that this black wire is just frayed to pieces. So I'm going to let this dry out, I think I'm going to add a little contact grease, uh, I'm sorry, dielectric grease, reconnect this. I'll isolate the wire from the other wires with some electric tape and then uh, we'll see if we don't blow any fuses. That would be awesome. Hey, I just found this electrical tape underneath the seat of this WJ. <laughs> Thank you, previous owner. It's like you knew that you were giving me bad O2 sensor wires. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. Now, this isn't a fix, guys. This is just trying to prevent future shorts just long enough to... Uh, to make sure that it doesn't blow any fuses. If this if this solves the fuse blowing issue, then uh, then I'll get myself a new O2 sensor, and that should save the day. Now, fortunately, this crack in the wire isn't in the Jeep harness; it is just in the O2 sensor connector. So when I replace the O2 sensor, it'll come with a new connector, and it should be all right. All right, where's my dielectric grease? Come on, come on. All right, connected. All right, I will replace that fuse and connect the battery. Nice. All right, got myself a nice little 15 amper. This is an easy ID fuse. It's supposed to light up or something when it goes. Fresh fuse. Go right down and fuse position 16. All right, let's see what happens. All right, new fuse right there. Just gonna tighten up this battery terminal. It'd be pretty slick if I could capture the fuse blowing on camera. Hopefully it won't blow, because I think I solved the problem. But if it did, you guys could see it. it. Should glow up nice and red for you. Well, maybe it won't, it is, it is day. So, <laughs> we'll see. All right. Yeah, baby, not blown. That right there is a win, guys. Sweet. Yeah, baby, look at this. Zero fault codes. Not even the hydraulic fan 1499 code. She's been running a couple minutes. Definitely enough to throw that code again and still nothing, so that's awesome. No O2 sensor codes and no hydraulic fan solenoid codes. I think we did it, guys. We actually killed two birds with one stone. Amazing. Well, 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 guys. Who would have thought that the O2 sensor circuit shares the same fuse as the hydraulic fan solenoid? Aha, uh -huh. see? Last night I did some extensive research and I found a gentleman with the same exact issue. He had a 1499 hydraulic fan solenoid code, but he also had a bunch of O2 sensor codes. And what happened was, he posted online in a forum about eight years ago that he had this issue and someone suggested to him that he check number 16 fuse and if it was blown, it would affect both the solenoid and the O2 sensors. That's exactly what happened to me. Isn't that incredible, guys, that a post on a forum eight years ago helped me solve a problem that I'm having today? 
same thing. The guy had an O2 sensor short, blown fuse, he changed the fuse, he fixed the short, and it solved his hydraulic fan solenoid problem. That's pretty amazing to me that Jeep would have a system where your cooling fan, something very important, was dependent on a power steering pump, which goes, and an O2 sensor fuse. That's it's mind-boggling. I, I don't know why they did that. I, I think a fan should be dedicated to a fan circuit and should not depend on power steering. So that is why I was extremely confident going into today's project that if I found the short and an O2 sensor wire that it would help me solve the hydraulic fan solenoid. Who would have thunk? I am now on my fourth fan. Three hydraulic fans later and one electric fan and the issue is solved. But it's all good. I learned a ton of information about these WJs and their hydraulic fans. So now we are good to go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this thing. I'm going to get it up to temperature. We'll see if the O2 sensors don't blow again. Hopefully they won't. And hopefully the hydraulic fan will get up to speed. We'll ramp up at those higher RPMs. And uh, when all is said and done, I'll get a new O2 sensor and everything should be just right. All right, guys, we are driving. Yeah, no check engine lights, no nothing. We're running nice and smooth. Actually, we do have the airbag light on, but that is a factory recall, so we're gonna have to address that at the dealership for free. But so far, everything else that I've been working on is working nice. Really enjoying it. So, what we need to do to this thing is we need to fix the front shocks. So we might as well put in two little pucks in there, maybe two inch spacers. We'll get a little lift out of this. This way we can fit those Moab wheels without, without any rubbing. And we need to fix the exhaust leak. There is a hole in the muffler and it's kind of uh, rattling on the heat shield. So we'll fix that. Let's see, we got, uh, we got a couple lights out in here. And we'll fix that. We'll do a hot oil flush at about 500 miles. And I got some new oil for you guys. Mechanically, the engine is doing just fine. I'm digging it. There's that rubbing. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I like it. Woo! We will see you at home. <laughs> that AC compressor kicks on and that fan is ripping. Heck yeah, guys. Problem solved. Woohoo! Ice cold AC. No check engine lights. Cool engine temperature. Yeah, baby. Well, all right, guys, we are going to wrap up this video. This marks a historic day in the Green Hornet WJ's life. I wonder how long it's been since it ran without check engine lights. But we did that today. This is excellent. The hydro fan is working. That's a miracle. And no O2 sensor lights. They didn't go back on, which means all the O2 sensors are good. The fuse is not blown. Everything is tip top. Still got a little bit of smoke coming up from that exhaust leak. Maybe we'll reach up in there. We'll crank down those exhaust bolts. Heck, maybe this thing could get a whole new exhaust because the muffler is shot. But that's another day. Uh, we've done very well so far in the series of the Green Hornet WJ. Don't worry, there's plenty more to come. Plenty more content on this bad boy. We've got to do a whole interior swap. There's, there's tons of stuff to do. This thing could be going for a long time. But we got it running, and I'm very happy with that. Very pleased. I still can't get my head wrapped around the fact that Jeep powers their fan with the power steering and the electronics are powered with the same circuitry as the O2 sensors. It's just crazy. I wish they would have made separate circuits for everything, but hey, what are you going to do? 
we figured it out and that's the most important thing so i hope this video helps you guys if you have the similar issues that i did so uh that's it guys remember to like subscribe and share and i will see you guys on the next project peace